es un placer poder uh, uh, participar en el encuentro. Eh, el tópico de hoy, uh, yo voy a hablar sobre el um, the use of uh, uh, remote robotic mechanical thrombectomy intervention. So the reason to, to go this route, I, I wanted to share with you where we are today on the delivery of mechanical thrombectomy using a robotic system, but more important, even in a remote way. So this is the um, uh, very much um, somewhat controversial topic, very early stage right now. Uh, just to give you a little bit of um, uh, background on this, the uh, evolution of interventional procedures is steady, but it's been for many years we have used uh, the um, um, our presence in the angel suite to do the procedures. So every time we are in the room with the patient with x-ray machine and we're delivering endovascular treatment as uh, we're familiar with. But with that involves that you have to be the patient and the doctor and the team, everybody has to be in the same place. You also have to have um, uh, very much a learning curve with your hands, you know, and get more experience over time. You have to lead, uh, use lead and be exposed to x-rays um, throughout your lifetime, your career. Um, and uh, so for many reasons, there is a, um, a, a, an interest on developing a perhaps a, a challenge, a more precise way to navigate through the blood vessels but also a way that nobody from the team is exposed to x-ray and you don't need to wear lead all the time. So this in, uh, initial concept was developed for the use on uh, peripheral and cardiology procedures and more recently starting neuro. The concept is more or less uh, like this. You have a, a robotic arm. Corepath so GRX is the second that, generation uh, robotic you know, system for cardio... Start. So you can see that uh, the robotic arm has these cartridges that you can connect at least uh, uh, right now, two systems. You can have a wire, you can have a catheter. Uh, we cannot do um, a, uh, uh, a coaxial system with more than two elements. It's uh, very complicated to do, but you can see here, you get uh, still regular uh, groin access as uh, we normally do. And then we would be able to then bring the arm and you will see that this, the rotating hemostatic valve gets connected to the initial part of the arm so that uh, you have that um, um, basically, and there's a special type of uh, a rotating hemostatic adapter and it has a little wheel there that allows for spinning of the catheter. And this gets now connected to the sheath so you have this sleeve that moves the guide up and down, and then we will go into the outside uh, uh, console, or you can be outside of the room. In this case, of course, it's just an example. The uh, operator is protected by a leaded shield area, and you're doing the procedure in the room, but protected from x-ray. So this is how the initial concept started to be done. You will see now we'll connect the wire, inside and this many times can be done by a member of your team and then you this part will allow you to go up and down with the wire and select different types of uh, anatomy using like a joystick uh, control to be able to move then wire and catheter okay so this is an idea of how this started and the uh, you can see the console and how you can control then the different components of this and in this case it is a, a coronary procedure that's been done um, now the nice thing about this is that uh, it, there is a possibility and the plan for this was to have um, a gradual development because it's a very big difference on using traditional feedback in your hands of how to do endovascular procedure, moving to robotics. So we have to make it gradual. But I think the idea of the uh, progress of this will be, you know, for the reasons justified of uh, perhaps less radiation exposure, uh, less fatigue with the use of lead for all our lifetime of the surgeon, but also maybe more precise navigation. Um, but the idea is that it started first with cardiac procedures, peripheral procedures, 
Now neuro procedures are starting, but the future of this uh, development is here and this final part of this is the use of remote surgery. And what I'm gonna share with you today is a little bit of where we are with this. The first remote intervention has been done already for a cardiac procedure and of about 20 miles away, the cardiologist was from the patient that was doing the procedure, was receiving the treatment. But observe here, that this doctor, he doesn't have control of the bed, uh, the angel suite, the C arm and the bed, he cannot control that remotely. So he has to have a team locally that helps him to move the table. But he has a camera that he can see the fluoroscopy and he can see the navigation. You can see on the side, he can have a camera from outside to see how everything is happening. You can see also the same uh, view of the fluoroscopy that we normally would have in the Angel Suite. Um, this is the distance and this is the setup. So you can see he does not have the control of the table here. He only controls the uh, catheter and the wire with the robotic system. Now, we have a, in Chicago now uh, a system between Wisconsin and Illinois. We have 27 hospitals and five comprehensive stroke centers, but there are about um, uh, three hospitals are uh, thrombectomy ready centers. So they have the angel suite capability, but don't have the comprehensive stroke uh, setup. So for us as a health system, Advocate Aurora may be a perfect uh, hub and spoke uh, way to um, uh, allow patients to receive acute stroke care very close to the, where they live. So short uh, trips to the hospital and potentially have, if there is a large breast occlusion, uh, especially if it's a, a fast progressor type of patient with a, an adequate anatomy, we would be able to potentially deliver the uh, proposed treatment. I'm gonna show you. This is the first publication. It was a colleague uh, from um, uh, not too far from Chicago, um, uh, Dr. Singer. He did a simulation. He was five miles away from the, um, uh, this model and he had a cardiologist in with the model and uh, connecting the system getting access for him. He was in his office five miles away from the where the robot was being controlled. But you see, he also does not have ability to move. He's not in a true angiography table. I think they were using only a camera. You can see a camera system here. So they were just showing the concept of the tele, the connection, the Wi-Fi connection between the office and the uh, laboratory, they were able to control the robot and catheterize. So what he did is he um, used the current available systems, um, um, all the striker, Medtronic, all the catheters we have, they're not compatible with the robot to be able to do a whole procedure. The only thing that he was able to demonstrate was a remote uh, navigation of the wire to the clot, and then the cardiologist advanced the guide catheter, and they start the aspiration, and they did also with stent retriever. But he, the only thing that the interventionist did remotely was the position of the wire close to the clot. So it was a very good initial publication was done last year. But we decided to take this a little bit further and I'm going to stop to share and I'm going to change my video now to another one here. Uh, just a second. Um, to this video here. Let me go live. So uh, we decided to build this concept uh, a little bit different. And this was just presented in our live course in Washington, D.C. Uh, but please follow with me. This is the first, I think, really rebo a remote robotic stroke thrombectomy that was done with the current devices. And so it's using a hub and spoke model. So the patient comes to a uh, spoke hospital or within your hospital system. And let's say you have an angel suite, you have a robot there, but you have a team, a local team. So you have the diagnosis of MCA occlusion. So you have to have a um, uh, somebody that will get the growing access for you, for you. And then a technician can help you connect the catheter to the uh, robotic system. And you, this position, the only thing you really need is the placement of the sheath. 
you can actually navigate the catheter yourself uh, remotely and you see the same uh, uh, arrangement. This time though, we have now control of the catheter, but the difference here is that we're gonna use a uh, type of uh, aspiration catheter that is uh, a wire on a stick. It's a catheter on a stick. It's called the, the um, Q system from MIVI. So that allows us actually to move uh, the MIVI um, uh, uh, four size into the placed guide catheter. And the way this uh, works is that the is an extension. It's a wire that it's connected to the robotic system. So you actually can control this is the first wire getting access, like a could be a synchro or any wire that you'd like to use. You can torque sideways, you can go uh, front and back. This is the same thing as the other team had performed, just getting access. But now instead of having a cardiologist or anybody helping you, you basically have the wire in position and you can use, you see the side arm. So this is a second arm you can actually use navigate the MIVI catheter remotely without have anybody locally helping you to do that. And you can, you will need somebody to connect this catheter to aspiration. And then we can uh, see at this point, you connect the, the pump. So the aspiration tube is connected and we start now doing the aspiration. Um, and this was done without having anybody uh, really assisting you uh, from the standpoint of um, intervention, but you are actually doing a, a true thrombectomy without uh, have a remotely, without having the hands of any other surgeon in the field while uh, in the hospital where you're doing the procedure. So the thrombectomy was uh, done, and now you do need to have somebody from the team to close the groin axis and the patient likely will be transferred at that point after the thrombectomy is done to um, a comprehensive site if needed to be to manage the patient postoperatively. But at least if it's a fast progressor, you took care of the problem early on and um, without having the patient uh, have to you know, suffer a major stroke. Um, but let me show you then a little bit more, which is uh, the that was the, the idea, the concept. So we move into the lab to show this. And this is now a true case that uh, we did uh, uh, simulating with uh, me being outside of the room. Um, so nobody is going to be in the room. I have full control of the table outside of uh, being in the angel suite as well as the robot. So now we are controlling, you see, have the model. The stroke um, uh, is in place, an MC occlusion too. So we do the same thing. We place the guide catheter in the carotid artery and advance the MIVI aspiration catheter, which is a catheter on a stick. So that allows you, is, a, uh, is the only way that a robot, uh, the core path robot can actually then control the, the guide catheter, the wire and the aspiration catheter. So you'll see here, uh, um, trying to navigate and you see I'm not in the angel suite. I'm outside of the room. And you can see on the side here, you have full control, all the console to move the table. You can do that remotely. You can move your C arm and the table. We have, you see, this is the view, nobody's in the room and the navigation is happening. So you can see the wires moving into the clot, only the robot in the room, no nurses, no techs, nobody. And you can see here now we're going to advance over the wire, the, asp the um, aspiration catheter. This is the MIVI Q4. And this is now will require, once you get position, I'll ask the nurse to connect to the aspiration. And um, this is um, uh, very much like a, a, a standard how you do, but nobody's in the room. Everything is being done remotely. And then uh, we will turn on. So I ask the nurse uh, in the room, in this case, you'd uh, either through a um, speaker system, you tell in the other hospital, somebody to turn on the aspiration. You follow this with the x-ray and the cameras outside of the room to see what's happening in the room and how the patient is doing. So the aspiration starts. And here we left for about um, two minutes, the aspiration, uh, and then until we got uh, feedback that there was no more uh, um, suction coming, you had a plug, and you can see also that we have a trap. This is a, a, a trap to get the clot, if we could see that. 
Um, so we waited enough time to ingest the clot into, in this case, of course, the, the clot has markers. So we knew the clot was in position and then the retrieval is being done all remotely. So we're doing this with the, uh, basically outside of the room and just pulling the system back. And then I'm moving the table without being in the room. Everything here, the C arm, the table is being controlled also remotely. And then the follow-up um, angiogram shows uh, a recanalization of this um, um, in the model, of course. So we're really excited about this because it's really, uh, I think you can see that there is um, a, um, uh, we're able to show that there is a possibility to do a remote connection and, and movement of uh, at least the robotic arm. We are uh, right now, the, the movement of the table, uh, the C arm and the, uh, and the table is still is being done hardwired, but it's outside of the room, but you, you were working on how to control the angels table and the C arm also remotely. So that gives you more independence on that. Um, but I think that, um, uh, uh, you know, the concepts that we have today, and this is what I'd like to start a debate with you today, is that do you bring the patient to the comprehensive stroke center always uh, for large vessel occlusion? So you do drip and ship model or mothership model, or uh, some uh, recent publications, they uh, recommend sometimes maybe more time efficient to bring the doctor to the patient to do the thrombectomy in another hostel, or maybe there will be a uh, value to do for uh, a remote robotic mechanical thrombectomy, like I demonstrated um, in the vitro model, um, because the key would be what patients will benefit the most from this. Is it maybe the fast progressors? Um, the patients do have to have an ideal anatomy for aspiration, because in this case, the current robot is really almost impossible to do a stent retriever for the things I mentioned to you. You have only the two ports to navigate. And um, I hope, uh, um, Manuel, can you hear me? Yeah, okay, good. And then um, the, so I think that uh, the, the other issue is the complication management. So if a problem happens, you would probably have to have, uh, of course, in the hospital, a team that can manage, you know, uh, uh, neuro and 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 uh, peripheral complications. But it is definitely to debate right now how this would be done. If it would, uh, uh, you know, what kind of uh, setup would be ideal for this? But it looks like the technology allows us to at least think about this possibility. I'm gonna stop here. I would like to, uh, um, of course, hear your, your thoughts on this. And uh, I, um, I, I am very curious to uh, see if you guys have any, um, uh, any questions or any comments. Thank you, Manel. Thank, thank you.